Mm, boy, that's good. You know what? We'll just say that's good. I thought I'd come out here and sit down a little bit, hang out for a while. Uh, sure glad you guys stopped in. I've had something on my mind really the last few years. There's been times when it was on my mind before and, and I changed jobs to get away from it, to be honest. Well, the last few years, of, we're back in it. So, how many of you, and this is gonna go for really anybody that has a driver's license and has owned a car or been responsible for a car, getting repairs done, maintenance, stuff like that. You know, how many of you had to take a car and you're either waiting on it or you're leaving it, uh, you know, how's that feel? I've done it a few times. Fortunately, I've always fixed my own stuff, but you know, there's been times when it was something I couldn't do or didn't have the technology, didn't have, you know, scan tools and all that. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd bought, bought the wife a, uh, uh, remote start set up for her vehicle, the one before she had, this has been a few years back. And I wanted, I wanted the factory set up. It wasn't the factory that I worked for, so I didn't have the technology to update the PCM and, you know, putting the parts on is fine, but they still had to go in and do the duty, duty, duty stuff and make it work, right? So I dropped it off in the morning and, and this whole time it was, it was a surprise, supposed to be. So I'm taking her car, to where I work to change oil, take, okay, cool, you know. Well, come about 5, 5.30, I hadn't heard anything, I call. And this is right down the road. So I call, oh, they'll call you back. Okay, great. So I go, I go home, uh, you know, and I like to have a drink or something sometimes when I get home, but I didn't because I knew I'd have to get back out and go get that car, hopefully. No call, no call, no call. So I go up there and wait and wait and wait. Just wanna know about my car. Simple deal, you know, it wasn't a big deal. So in my mind, I'm a little upset, at, you know, at this point. Finally talked to the manager and he says, yeah, that, that, that system you're wanting on that car, we, it, it needs a hood switch because it's got a sensor on it and, or a, a hood latch with a sensor and your latch doesn't have the sensor. I said, okay, well, what's that cost? He's like, oh, it's like, you know, $42. I'm like, dude, you've had all day long to tell me that. I don't care if it's $100, put it on the car, get the car done, let me have the car back. And here I am in the same business as that guy on the other end of it just like he is on the other end of it but here i am on on this end and in that moment i realized what it was like for customers the consumers in this automotive industry and i i hate to be you know i don't i don't want to be the complainer i want to enlighten people show them the other side of things in hopes to make things better I don't see how it'll get better, but you know, is, is it worth starting the, the discussion about it? I think it is. Where I work now, and I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna say anything bad of where I work, who I work for, the manufacturer I work through, you know. Um, but there's a whole lot of things going against the customer. A lot, a lot more than it used to be. For years we fought, the, the, the bad rap that mechanics got. And then we started calling ourselves technicians and being more professional, being cleaner, not being a grease monkey, actually diagnosing things. Nowadays you have to. With all the electronics, all the, all the stuff, man, it takes some time, it takes some knowledge, it takes a lot of training to be able to get through that stuff and figure it out and be right the first time because they preach that. Fix it right the first time. Yep, manufacturer does. If you don't keep that percentage high enough for them, they dock you for it. They make your life harder. Fix it right the first time. Sure. So these brand new cars that didn't get put together right, didn't get engineered correctly, 
something's not going right and we need parts, oh, those parts aren't available yet. Okay. Fix it right the first time. So on top of all that, you have corporations that own these dealerships and, and you guys that work at dealerships, tell me what, you know, comment down there, tell me what you think. How's it for you? It's a huge fight for business. And so our schedule is wide open. And the reason is, and they don't care. They don't care how many technicians we have. Half of them could be on vacation. Don't matter. You're getting the same amount of cars every day. And that's as much as we can get every single day. Is this good for the customer? I sure don't believe so. Because I've got 13 cars I got to look at in one day and each one on top says, buy today, diag today. Oh, you don't have to fix it today. You just have to diag it. Okay. Right. And how much time do I have for that diag, for that said diag, for that inspection, to look over that whole entire vehicle that you as a technician should do to cover your own butt, to be good to your, tech, your, your customers, take care of your customers, right? Because there's trust that we have to build and not be grease monkeys, not be mechanics, be professional technicians. In my case, I do the very best that I can do, the very best. Luckily, I've done it long enough. There's a lot of things I can pick up pretty quick. I can drive a car. I hear that noise. I know what it is, you know. There's a few other guys in the shop that are like that, but for the most part, they're not. It takes time. So if you don't have the time, what do you do? Educated guess. Educated guesses are fine until you're wrong. So to cover your butt, I'm gonna sell that, 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 that. Cover all the bases to make sure I'm right. Again, who pays for that? Yeah, the customer. And on top of all of this, new vehicles are freaking absolutely outrageously priced. The cheap ones, it's the same as getting a mortgage. It really is. You can go up to 10 or 15 years on a car loan. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? No, it don't. And so because of that, rightly so, I, and I believe that's what customers and consumers should do is fix their old stuff. And so the repair side is overwhelmed. People will fix them. We're looking at cars with 200,000, 300,000 miles, you know, and they want that thing restored, rebuilt, fix it. Because it's so much cheaper, even though <laughs> that's way over the top expensive nowadays than it is to go buy a car, you know. And on top of that, of course, the lack of technicians. You looked at the last video that was in this setting, talked about apprentices and um, you can't get people to even get in the business. And when they do, they don't survive. They get out and they go do something else. Old guys like me are still hanging in there, trying. If I told him yet to tomorrow, man, I'm done. I've, I'm retiring, I'm getting out of the business. You know what they would do? Give me a whole bunch of money to stay. And they don't care. And you know why? because the customer pays for it. Not them, the customer does. I started in this business in 1989. The door rate, the labor rate per hour was $42.50. Now a lot of places, 170, 180 an hour. And that's all a relative term anyway, because they have matrix and, and the more hours they charge a little bit more, depends on what it is, they charge more per hour. You know, it's getting kind of out of hand, I think. I'm not complaining, I, I make good money. Sometimes when I make good money, uh, you know, a lot of times it's, it's luck that I'm right about diagnosing a car. See the pants, you know, hip shot, kabang, oh, bullseye, hit that one. You know, all the guys that are in this business aren't like that. 
they take chances, they get bit, it doesn't matter. The customer pays for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I've thought and thought, you know, and I've hollered and screamed that, you know, man, we gotta, we got to take care of the schedule. We've got to, you know, you, our waiting room isn't big enough. We have twice as many people waiting on their car to get fixed on the location than there are technicians to fix those cars. Doesn't make any sense to me. But I don't know anything. In 35 years, you're right, I probably don't know anything. But I do know customers. I know what it's like for me as a customer. There's an expectation. You want to pay that kind of money? I'm, I'm totally fine with charging top dollar. Yes. But then I do my very best to live up to that expectation. And it, it hurts me. It hurts my insides when I'm forced to not be able to do that. It makes me mad because that's not why I'm in this business. I'm in this business to make a good living, to fix stuff and make it be right and be proud of the job I do. Not be forced to go, eh, man, it's probably that. Put it outside. You know, you drop your car off. I'm gonna tell you customers, as a customer, I would not leave your car there. Wait. Just tell them, I'm going to sit here and wait until you look at it. Go from there. That's the big trend right now because, because the customers have learned if I walk away from here and leave my car here, I won't hear anything. It'll take me two days to get a hold of somebody to find out they haven't looked at my car yet. Then what was the appointment for? Oh, your appointment was for the time of drop-off. Mm -hmm. Right. They're trying to tell the advisors, tell, tell them that it's, this is just a drop off time, not, you know, we're, we're not looking at your car right now. But here we're supposed to be professional. Remember that word? Nobody I work with is at fault in this situation. We're all pushed into this situation by a lot of things by the corporations that we work for, the corporations that sell the make that we try to fix and franchise for. You don't have a choice. I could leave there and go to another dealership anytime, anytime I want to. But why bother when it's the same thing? I make good money? Yes, sir, I make good money. Do I like going to work? Nope. There's a, oh, had to be a motorcycle. Anyway, you know, I keep wondering what's the fix? What do we do to fix it? Because guys like me don't know anything. You know, is it, is it, I've always firmly believed, and I, I was in management for uh, five, six years. Two or three of those years, I was a service manager. And I believed in controlling, uh, that's just how I believed. Because I worked as a technician for long enough before that to know the time I need to properly look at a vehicle and to hold that technician accountable for that vehicle. What you don't do Give him 13 cars in one day to look at. Park him in the hallway behind his stalls. Do this waiter, do this, do this. That's what you don't do if you want to hold your technician accountable. You want to pay him all this money, hold him accountable? You can't do that. They don't go together. So what about the customer? You know? Those are the people that pay our bills. The people that give me my livelihood. In management, you're right, there's a few customers that you just cannot, you can't do nothing right, don't matter. I can bend over backwards, I can 
do all the all the nonsense you know drive them home pick them up and it don't matter you're never going to make them happy that's all that's that's pretty much a very rare case usually people that get like that they get like that for a reason mm -hmm. because they're the customer and they expect more than that they deserve better than that probably i'm sure i've had some of the worst customers that nobody would deal with but i would and i'd take care of them you know when they came back because they would come back they wouldn't deal with nobody but me now my hands are tied in a lot of instances you know the best thing you could do is be honest with that person in front of you about their car honesty it's all i can do i'm your friend in this situation i want to help you the best i can but my hands are tied this is all i can do it costs this much it costs us this much it just does i don't know you guys tell me what you think the answer is there has to be an answer there's a reason why guys like us want to get out of that business like i do one day and there's reasons why kids don't want to they don't want to be brought up in this business what's going to happen five years from now ten years from now is it all big plan that that actual computer that plugs into a car and tells a guy everything that's wrong with it actually happens could be and all you have is some guy plugs in a computer and the factory fixes it through Wi-Fi does all the stuff and says hey put that part on we're sending it to you that'd be better for the customer in the long run anyway I don't know boys and girls I I, uh, I try to keep my chin up hit the grindstone running make a living for my family and try to do the best stuff that I can do with what I got again it's 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 a hard living it pays well but I like sleeping at night I've known a few technicians that didn't care they didn't care about the customer they could they could give they wouldn't they don't care but I've met enough of them I've got to be friends with enough of them that I care I want the people that I work with to care are they forced to not care probably so it's probably not their fault well then we got to fix something else then you know well here's all that and I'm probably not going to say much more about it this point on forward but it's a video I thought I wanted to make and I've wanted to make for a long time would you take your car somewhere then you have your expectations do yourself a favor when you drop that car off you tell them your ex expectations tell them what you expect not in a mean way hey you know i expect i'll hear from you later today okay what's your name can i have your card you want to do you your 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 customer experience is partly on you unfortunately nowadays that's how it is take your car to the same place all the time find that one person that acts like he cares and that's your man or your girl and you ask for them I'm not talking to anybody else if they leave and they go somewhere else find out where they went because it's a rare thing to find somebody who really cares about you and your car I don't care if they're acting if they're a great actor makes you feel good that's where you want to spend your money because you know what we'd all make a lot more money if we spent more time with people and their cars We'd, we'd have trust there would be no doubt you say I need that fix it I don't care what it costs I trust you I know that when I leave here my stuff's gonna be right you're not gonna call me three four times now you need this now you need that now you need this the parts on back order we'll see you in six months 
I'll call you when the part shows up. That's not how you treat customers. It's not how I would. All right, Uncle Mike here. <laughs> Glad you checked out Junks Automotive. We'll be back Sunday on this MGA. Took a little bit of break this week on it, and it's for a reason. We'll get to that in the video Sunday. Um, but we're getting down the road with it. Sure glad you guys stopped in to hang out a little bit. We'll see you on the next one. Mmm. We'll drink some more of this. Mm -hmm.